There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories about this, so much more, right here on Supernatural Confrontations. <laughs> Very special guest. His name is Lorenzo, and we'll uh, we'll hear what he has to say about what's going on in the cosmos, as it were. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor, folks. Have you taken a good look at the banks lately? On the surface, everything seems fine, but there seems to be a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are loans for homes, cars, and those credit cards we all use. Folks, they're hitting record highs. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Why risk your money for a tiny 5% return when things are so shaky? This is where Noble Gold Investments can help. They're like that friend who knows all about keeping money safe. They suggest gold and silver, oldies but goodies in the financial world. Plus, they've got a sweet deal. A free quarter ounce gold standard coin this month if you qualify. Pretty good stuff, right? If you're curious, just give them a call at 877-646-5347. It's just a chat, no pressure. They'll help you figure out if gold and silver are right for you. Or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Once again, the number 877-646-5347. Folks, we've invested in Noble Gold, and quite frankly, I'm glad we did. So I'm here with Lorenzo, and um, we right off the bat, we, we may disagree on some things. That's okay. But we're here to discuss your paradigm, my paradigm, what's going on. So tell us, I mean, what do you, you look at the burgeoning UFO phenomena. It's, it's everywhere. Congress is talking about it. I mean, are these our space brothers or are they something else? Well, I love that you said supernatural confrontations, because I've found, you know, over the last 30 years, I've done a recapitulation of my life recently, even since you invited me on, I guess it's been about 10 days or two weeks yeah. before, you know, yeah. we finally got Roughly, together, yeah. you said, let's chat. It was a bit of a surprise, which was nice, a, a beautiful surprise. And I'd wondered all that time, what am I going to, you know, discuss with LA? You know, I watched some of your videos, I've seen what you've presented over the years, and it seemed that we do have many connection points, let's say, in, in our paradigms, as you say. So UFOs. I have a strong feeling that the UFOs, I would like to say space brothers, if you like. I don't think they're naturally helpful space brothers or not <laughs> helpful space brothers. You know, I, I'm not going to fall on one side of the fence or the other as far as they go. You know, I would say, in my opinion, if I want to be so bold as to call them the gatekeepers of ascension. That's what I'm going to call our space brothers, space okay. sisters, what have you. And the reason I call them that is I have found over the 30 years, like I was raised in Toronto, in Canada. Uh, I have siblings that are all lawyers and chartered accountants, just to give you an idea, and cousins that are also in that vocation. I tried to be a stockbroker on Bay Street for seven, eight years. Didn't work. Almost, di almost <laughs> died of an ulcer yeah, when right. I was 30. Uh, dr dropped it all. You know, I had the car, the motorcycle, the house, the, 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 the big salary. That I was sitting you know, just to give you an idea, in my, my boss's office at the time, fighting to become the sales general manager, and I had asked for a five-year contract for, you know, a lot of money, and he said, all right, Lorenzo, we're going to put the golden handcuffs on you. That was his, his words. Literally, at that moment, my paradigm shifted. I, 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 everything dropped out of my bottom, let's say. It felt like my whole floor dropped away, and... Literally within a week, I had quit, sold everything, and went to live in the mountains of Mexico. Uh, Tepoztlan, you know, up in a small village, Wegwe, Coyote, uh, was, a, was, a, was an intentional New Age community at the time. To see, you know, what it is and how I wanted to follow my life through a path that was beyond what I was told was possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so getting back to our space brothers, uh, you know, 
fast forward 30 years later, you know, I've spent the last three decades literally fighting my way to my path of heart, my path of freedom, my path of ascension. You know, I, I was raised pretty religious in some ways. I, my, my wife is Shinto. So I've studied, you know, Buddhism, Muslim. My, my first long-term girlfriend was a Muslim. Uh, you know, my friend is a Roman Catholic. I was raised Jewish. I mean, I don't follow any of the official religions personally, but I've been able to put them all together to give myself a picture of where it is we're going and where we want to go and why we're here and why we're alive. And I feel maybe your readers, from what I've seen, all everyone can understand they'd like to get to heaven. They'd like to have a good life. They'd like to live in, in the glory of their hearts. You know, we'll, we'll say if we're going to be non-denominational, have a happy family, uh, a happy community, make a lot of money for themselves, good abundance, whatever that is for you, and to live a life of happy uh, abundance, fortitude, and, and goodwill, let's say. So then we come back full circle. Why is the world the way it is? You know, everyone could probably agree it's not so nice in so many ways. We don't need to get into the details. Uh, you know, there's challenges, there's wars, there's fears, there's famine, there's supposed lack, there's, you know, so kinds of sicknesses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what's going on when we're supposed to be in the kingdom of heaven, in my opinion, and we're not, for the most part, you know, living in how we all strongly feel, I would say, especially your viewership, feel that we can't. So what what is what is the ascension? I mean, let, let's get right down into it. You know, you're talking about something, and, and you you just gave me the big smorgasbord from you're raised Jewish, but your yeah. wife is Shinto, and you know you yeah. you were in a New Age community. So I mean, I get that. I was I was raised Roman Catholic and was completely immersed in the New Age. I had spirit guides. I was under a guru. My third eye was open the whole nine yards. But then at thirty, um, I had a profound experience, sort of a Paul on the road to Damascus experience where I fell into the hands of a living God, uh, the same God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, which completely changed my life. And that's 44 years ago, and here mm -hmm. I am, you know. So tell us what your version of ascension is. Well, I would say I would agree with you falling into uh, the pathway of the Spirit. You know, that's what I'll call it without giving you know, God a name. And my pathway to ascension is essentially getting over all your fears activating your full potential as a loving being, you know, being, as we're both men, being a grounded man in this world, helping your community thrive, grow, and become the best that they can be according to what each person decides is the best for them without anybody getting in the way. You know, I still strongly feel the only rule there should be in this earth is do no harm. You know, be as kind as you can and allow your brother, your, your, your neighbor, your friends to grow into the type of beings they could be. So, you know, going full circle. And again, why isn't that happening? Well, I would say a lot of, like I see the big skulls behind you, a lot of the challenges people have, I would say are the fifth dimensional mind. <coughs> you, know, the, the, you know, we only supposedly see what 10% of light more or less as humans, 7%. I've heard even 1% and I've heard up to 12%. So what's going on? You know, when you're walking down the street and you want to do something good, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we all seem to have those challenges between our ears that tell us we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, we can't do it, uh, you know, someone's out to get you, there, there's six things or eight things or 12 things that are in your way, and I would say that or those or them, I don't know if you've read any Carlos Castaneda. But the I, was, I was a student of Carlos Castaneda years and years and years ago. Uh, before, of course, I became a born-again Christian with um, The Little Smoke <clears throat> and the teachings of Don Juan. Absolutely. I was very much embraced all of that. Let me just throw you this. That <clears throat> okay, please. In, in, you, know, you mentioned you were raised Jewish, so obviously you got the Ten Commandments. You got those, those, that list. You know, mm -hmm. she'll not have other gods before me. You know, and, and on and on it goes. Don't make a graven image and bow down to it. Right. I mean, those I mean, it's like right there. Honor thy father and thy mother. And, and it continues. And we could I can name them all. But I think you get the point. The point is, having traveled through Eastern mysticism, Carlos Castaneda, um, third eye open with gurus. And I, this is this is my question to you. I remember that after being in the ashram, waking up at five in the morning and, and meditating and doing all this and having spirit guides, blah, blah, blah. It was, I woke up one night around two or three in the morning and I went into this hall where the guru's picture was on a, on a, 
uh, chair. The chair was on a dais. There were candles burning because they revered the guru. And I, I, I prostrated myself in front of the picture and I wept bitterly. I wept ap uncontrollably deep, heaving sobs. And the reason for this is I realized that I was the same schmuck I'd always been, that, that nothing had really changed inwardly. And it wouldn't be till another six years, seven years after that, where I became born again spirit filled. In other words, I, I hear what you're saying with ascension, but I would, I would ask you, it, I, and I've heard all this before, even with Carlos Castaneda and gurus, mm -hmm. they never deal with the depravity of, of a human heart. They never deal with a human being's sin nature. And that's what separates, let's say, Christianity. And I'm not talking, you know, churchianity here. I'm talking, you know, first century Christianity. That's the miracle. That's the miracle, being born again a spirit-filled. I hear you. I mean, I love Jesus. I love the, the past masters. I, I, I have personally seen, like, like if you look even at the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, the translations that have gone on over the years. I mean, who's translated them? How have they been translated even from one language to the next? It's very easy to misinterpret, whether it's on purpose or by accident, a lot of what maybe has been said in the past. So I love that you've said, you know, not being focused all of these other you know religions so-called on your heart on the fulfillment of your soul on the fulfillment of, of of what it is you would love to do so i agree with you 100 percent. i would say that you know these gatekeepers of ascension or the aliens or the mind parasites are the ones that enclose your heart that stop you from getting through to your love that keep you away from what you would love to do whether it's a negative idea or a negative emotion or a negative experience. I mean, I feel strongly, we've all been abused growing up, whether it's emotionally sure. or physically. We've all been in school, right? We've all had TV. <laughs> stop, we, stop. You know, we've all been in school. Been, That's abusive yeah. in itself. Please continue. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, they all look like prisons. You know, I, I, reali I realize now why I ran away from them and why, I was, you know, why I'm miserable. And, you know, we've all had, you know, our sexual experiences. We've all had our misdirections in that, that way. I mean, when you hit puberty, nobody gives you good advice, in my opinion. You know, you see TV, you see the movies, you hear from your friends. And generally, because at the, that point, right, everyone wants love. So you're right. And then it gets crossed with sexuality quite a bit. It did for me anyways. I can only talk from my own experience when I was, you know, 18, 28, 38. And to untie that and to realize, you know, that, you know, love is more of a love for spirit, if you like, a love for God, if you like, a love for heaven, if you like, you know, a love for the best way of life, if you like. And what is that? So, you know, I, I have a question for you, Ali, if, if I might then sure, to, please. To turn it back. Yeah. What what does born again mean to you? Like being a born again Christian? What, what, how would you define that? Well, Jesus tells us um, in Scripture that unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and okay. Nicod he's telling us to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus is going like, how can I be born again? I mean, I can't go back in my mother's womb type of thing, and you can't be. And the, the, the miracle of Christianity happened in the first century. Um, you had the apostles and the women up in the upper room, and they were waiting for the spirit of a living God. So Jesus has already ascended, and he's not there anymore. And, you know, as far as a past master, see, we, we differ in that. He's not a master. He's the son of a living God. He's God himself incarnate. But I digress. So what happened was in, in that upper room, for the first time in all of history, the spirit of a living God not only descended upon people, but came into people, came into people. The spirit of a living God indwelt a human being, male and female. And that changed everything. It happened to me 44 years ago. And you know, it, it's ongoing still, obviously. Um, so that's what being born again is. What happens is, in my opinion, and having gone through Carlos Castaneda, you know, using mushrooms to, to, to tap in, spirit guys, the whole deal, all that. And then all of us, yeah, I know, we have a, a similar, that's why we're here talking about this. But what, what it never did is it never dealt with the sin nature, one, and God was never within me. That spirit guys were within me. That's a whole different deal. But the living God, the spirit of a living God was never within me. And that that just changed everything. And the bottom line is, unless a person's experienced that, it, it would be like me trying to tell you, you know, flying an airplane is really cool. You're going to love it. But if you've never been in an airplane, how can you possibly relate to it? 
Well, you know what's funny, yeah. LA, which is really the way, like, like I'm, I'm a firm believer in life taking the course you allow it to take, is when you first contacted me, you know, we had a few hiccups along the way. You mm-hmm. got busy and I got busy. We never connected. No, I wanted to talk with you, but I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about. And since we did chat, I could say quite, quite, quite honestly, I, I had my own born again, let's say, experience over the last even 10 days. Right? Because, you know, I had to sit back and review my life. This is how I came to it. You know, we can talk about de- demons and Jesus in the desert. Wasn't it 40 days and 40 nights? He Correct. was fighting demons before. You know, so so let's just say I, dark time of the soul. There's a lot of ways to put, you know, that experience, if you like. Um, no, but I had my experience. I had to sit with a buddy that's known me since I was 18. Wow. And a very good friend, you know, so I've known him pretty much my entire life. And he is was kind enough to share with me all the bad things I've done in my life. <laughs> you know, for, you know all, all the horrible ways I've treated. Like, he's known me. So so we've done, you know, the new Agora, uh, you know, the links I sent you, the website together. He helped me with, you know, I've done 222 videos. I didn't even realize it until I checked uh, yesterday. But he sat there and he literally, for an hour and a half, two hours, delineated all the bad things I've done to people, to myself, to my parents. You know, he's known my parents. I've known his parents. We've lived with each other's parents over the years. He's, he's one of the fellows that went to me with Mexico, you know, going back in the story. So I had to see how I've been rotten, let's say. And I used to fight that up until, you know, even three weeks ago. But then I sat back and I, you know, shaking, literally, you know, I was vomiting, feeling like horrible. Mm. Uh, and I had to sit back and see, how is it true? How have I been bad to my fellow man? How have I been bad to myself? How have I been bad to my fellow women? You know, how have I been not kind to my own dreams, my own God, if you like, my own spirit? And I took that in. And then I had a dream that night when I was sleeping. Like I couldn't even, you know, I usually watch TV to relax or a movie. Couldn't do anything except sit in bed and shake, mm. right? you know, you know, and then so, and I didn't sleep for most of the night, to be honest, right? Because this was like roiling in me. I would like pass out 10 minutes, wake up, pass out. And then finally around two, I guess, I looked at the clock just before I passed out, woke up at five and I felt new, right? I go, I felt good, right? I was a little tired, but I was like refreshed and, and, and energetic. And I had a dream, which I've never shared with anyone but my wife. And I'm going to share with you guys right now, where I was floating, you know, and made up of a million fibers, a million pieces, a million light, <clears throat> li- million bits of light, let's say it. That was my soul. And it was spread out over infinity, very thin, thin as a silk sheet, if you like. And I felt each one of those fibers is an experience of my life as a moment where I interacted with you or someone or my friends or my parents or my mother when I was five, you know, whatever. We've all had our experiences in life. We've all had our relationships. And I saw, you know, they're each a different hue, a different color of light, right? It's the only best way I can describe it. And everyone was like a chord. You know, we play a chord or a musical chord. And everyone was the experience of my life. And a lot of them were horrible experiences, like how I was, how I cheated, how I was, I lied to myself, how I didn't, you know, I wasn't honest to the Ten Commandments. I've broken a few of them over. I haven't killed anybody, but I've broken a few of those over the years, I have to say. Mm-hmm. You know, not honoring my parents being one many times over. Sure. If you we've like. all, we've all fallen yeah. short of the glory of God. You know, false idols, et cetera, et cetera. And I had to accept responsibility. And I almost floated away. Maybe this is like being born. I could feel myself dying almost that night, like floating into infinity and becoming nothing. And with will, I said I didn't feel it was my time to go yet. I pulled myself back as much as I could until I was a coherent whole again. I pulled all those fibers, if you like, the best way I can describe this, because it's almost impossible to use words to describe this feeling. But I pulled myself back to myself. I became who I am now. And I woke up, I felt like a big rushing wind, and I woke up in my bed, where my futon, I live in Japan, so I sleep on the floor <laughs> on a mattress and a futon, and I woke up in my futon and went, holy F, if you like. That's weird. But something's changed. Like, I spent 30 years of my life becoming a, a, an a-hole, let's say, if you like, a, as, as a business guy, a, you know, and a, I don't like any of the, 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 the people I met growing up in the religious schools. They were horrible, to be honest. You know, I dropped being religious of any kind around then. Then I spent the next 30 years doing what you did, let's say, searching. all the, Like I, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, the, the secret, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the children of God, etc. Like all of that stuff, you know, like, and I went to all the ashrams, or ashrams, pardon me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I lived in them too. And then I guess maybe that's what we're talking. I don't know about me being born again, but it feels like 10 days ago I was, interestingly enough. Right? And well, now we're we, talking. You had, you definitely had some sort of a, a cathartic experience. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, I this is what happened to me was 
I was I was searching. I, I had already been through gurus, new age, third eye open. I mean, ashram, whole deal. We've already been through all that. And now I was agnostic. And I'm probably about, there's like a period from 27 to 30 where I'm just agnostic. I don't want to hear any of this stuff. And so I'm reading a book by Dave Hunt called The, uh, the Cult Explosion. And, you know, Hunt is a, is a Christian writer, was a Christian writer. He's passed away now. And he's going through all these different, um, like Guru Maharaji, like um, EST, EST, like um, Yogananda. I mean, just all these different, different things to, to embrace. And, and I'm going, yep, yep, like you. Yep, check, 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 check. You know, right down the line. So at the end of the book, there's this little prayer. And okay. I'm alone in my room. Nobody's around. Nobody yelling at me. No pressure. And at the end, there's just this little prayer. And it says, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, say this little prayer and ask him in. And my, my immediate attitude was, okay. And it's like I said out loud, if you're real, if you're really real, come into my life and change it. So I said the prayer and I waited. Nothing happened at all. Nothing happened. I went to bed. 30 days later, I was, that's when everything started. I was pulled out of the kingdom of darkness. Um, and I mean pulled out of the kingdom of darkness. I didn't realize what I had taken into myself mm. and pulled out. And, and that was 44 years ago. Very intense experience. For three years, I lived as a celibate man. I, I was in boot camp, spiritual boot camp, as it were. Um, I had two mentors, Pastor Fred Nicholas and Wayne Kendall. Uh, Fred was 30 years my senior. Wayne was 20 years my senior. And these guys brought me through some of the darkest days of my life. So, I mean, being born again was accepting Jesus because the work on the cross is unprecedented. And I want to, I want to just throw something at you real quick that okay. most people don't understand this. He's, he's the head of the body of a church. He's the first firstborn of a dead so that he would be preeminent in everything. So most people don't get this, that if he's really the God man, fully God, fully man, and he incarnates. So there he's on the cross and nobody knows, everybody's going like, why doesn't it come down? What's going on here? So what happens is, and this is absolutely unprecedented, Jesus becomes death. And the dragon, Satan, who never thought that this would happen, never thought that he would do this. And so his body is in the tomb. His spirit and soul go down to Tartarus. And they, there he preaches to the fallen angels, which are in these gloomy dungeons, this goes back in Genesis 6, and the Nephilim and the flood. This is my wheelhouse. I won't go into too much detail. But then he goes back, and for the first time, we have a resurrected body where the spirit and the soul come back into the body. This is the type of the rapture of the church. And he's the firstborn of the dead so that he is preeminent in all things, which is just mind-boggling. And then you can see the picture. That's from the Shroud of Torin. I call the yep. Shroud of Torin... God's calling card, because that's what, I mean, that that's that piece of, piece of cloth has been studied, you know, more than any other cloth, in, in the, any other artifact in the history of the world. So we're right at the 30 minute mark. I don't like to go too long. I'm going to give you the last word. Um, you know, one, one I'll, I'll just say this before I let you go. When I mean let you go, give us the last word, put a bow on this thing. But but there's a phrase I came up with years ago. If you think you know him, but you don't know him, then you don't know him. And that's, that's my challenge to you. I mean, if you think you really know him, but you don't know him, then you don't know him. And he's not just a master. I mean, he didn't say he was a master. I mean, my guru was the perfect master, Guru Maharaji. But Jesus claims to be, you know, God himself. I and the Father are one. I'll give you the last word. Okay. Well, if you confront the fallen angels... Because we were gonna, we, we do want to put a bow on this. And, you know, we talked about the gatekeepers of ascension. Let's say Jesus confronted the fallen angels. It sounds like before he came back. I think we all get that opportunity. That's what I think these fifth dimensional mind parasites are, gatekeepers of ascension. I think we all, in our way, have to confront our fallen angels, our ways in our life. We haven't been so nice. We haven't been so kind. We haven't been worthy of the kingdom of heaven. I'll put it that way. And if you confront all of that and you overcome all of that and you get forgiveness for all of that, and you, you know, you ascend personally through all of that, then you can be born again 
you can do what Jesus did. Isn't that what Jesus said? You know, you too can do what I do. You can be like me. You know, he didn't say follow me. He said, you can be like me, right? So I think we all get to, in this life, confront our own fallen angels, our own demons, our own not so nice ways that we've been alive and to use those if you want to call them the like we didn't really even get into the alien so i'd love to come back yeah, we, we probably need to do another show maybe next week or yeah. something yeah. yeah i would be delighted to you know to get more back into the aliens because you know we did a bit of a segue but this is beautiful because i didn't expect it to go this so there is what i would say and how i would leave it you can I, I would just say angels. one thing jesus never said yes. you'll be like me he said follow me he never said okay. you'll be like me there's a huge difference there you know, okay, we, we okay, are too. Know, I just just want okay. to make make sure you know, we you, you, put you, that you one to follow bed. Him. Sure, why not? You know, like I, I would say, I followed people in my life that have done better than me and have followed the examples. And I would say then, if I'm going to, you know, put a little another little bow on this bow, maybe by follow me, in my opinion, he meant to do the similar actions as me, so that you can also ascend yourself. You know, not follow and be like you can't be born again and and you can't go out and kill people. As an no, example, that's right? not going to work. Man. So you can't go out and do bad things now, no, now that no. you're born again, right? No. You have to follow through with your epiphany and live a good life, I'm saying. So there you go. So that's how I would leave this. Well, Lorenzo, we'll have to have you back on and we'll continue the conversation. Thank you for, for watching. I appreciate it. Let me just wrap it up by the camera one here, folks. Thanks for watching Supernatural Confrontations. It's, uh, our guest today, Lorenzo, a very interesting conversation and we'll have him back and we'll be talking about all things alien when we do. I think that's going to be a cool show. But uh, I will be in Arkansas um, uh, coming up. Go to our website, lamarzuli.net. I'll be speaking Friday and then all day Saturday and probably Sunday. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out our Roswell films. You can see them right there. They are available on streaming.lamarzuli.net. Also below are the links for Lorenzo's sites. If you want to go nose around and check some stuff out, please feel welcome to do so. Remember, folks, there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Thanks so much for watching.